Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay. <laughs> what am I going to talk about this time? Um, uh, I, I, I get the strange feeling it's probably going to end up book related because, you know, I am in that period of time right now where I should be book prepping for the release of No Doors Allowed. Um, I haven't actually looked at the uh, blurb since <laughs> I recorded the last video a few days ago, which isn't like the best of me, but to be fair, I have been working, I have been doing other things. I also, it's obviously, I've, I've like spent the last couple of months literally every single day off that I've had has just been editing, 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 editing. I've not really had that much of a break, um, not had that much downtime. So um, I think I'm sort of giving myself a little bit of downtime. <laughs> I've got time. I've I've got a little bit of time. It's fine. I I'll get it sorted. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to sort of. And I've got a better idea just based on the the draft that I've made as to where I want to go with the blurb. But I, mean, I really need to sort of actually get in and and sort of just sort of sort that. <laughs> um. So, in the meantime, I guess I could... There are several things I could do. I could talk a little bit about the spin-off books, um, what I'm hoping my plans are with the spin-off books. Um, ideally, I want them to be their own series that is branched back to the Navarating Collection. Okay, so this is, this is the thing. So obviously I've got the Don't Make a Sun's books, which are part of the Shadows Beneath the Light series. Um, and one of the two books that I'm writing at the moment, which current working title is Cursed in Mayo, with the possible arc title of Polar Strings. But this is the one where, if you saw my video, how long ago it was, <laughs> I don't remember now, where I was talking about... Um, I've got sort of like an arc title and uh, a book title and I'm not sure which way around I want them. This is the way around it is currently because Kirsten Mayo is what it's saved under. Um, but I don't know if Pull the Strings... Uh, Pull the Strings might just sort of based on like how the book is shaping up towards the end because I'm nearly at the end of this one now. I'm nearly at the end of it. Uh, so I'll be starting the, the second part of the arc. Um, soon <laughs> hopefully um but just sort of based on where things are at this point and where things are shaping up at this point i think pull the strings or cut the strings or however i'm actually going to uh to size that i know it's not like the string is it, is it pull the strings it's something like that i i know i know what it is but i can't actually like 100 percent remember what i thought it thought of it will come back to me at some point, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think just based on how things are shaping up, it will actually make for the better arc title with uh, Curse and Mayo being the actual book uh, book title for the first book, um, which I think I've mentioned before um, is like the like. I know I'm getting like really off track with what I'm talking about. I don't care. I'm just going to go with this. <laughs> um, so for those of you who've seen the videos that are relating to the Shadows Beneath the Light series, you'll know that when I originally wrote it 10-ish years ago, um, I wrote four books for it, but just based on what I remember about the, the later two books, the other two books uh, that I wrote, um, well, I don't, I didn't like them, essentially. Uh, certainly the first book, the, sorry, the, the fourth book kind of went in very uh, kind of directions, um, just because it, I, I think because I was trying to like tie up so many things, I kind of did too much with it. Um, so I think those two books very much suffered from 
kind of an overload um, of stuff going on with them. So um, after I decided that now I want to do more books in this series because there are definite loose ends from both books that need to be resolved one way or another. Um, basically decided I was just going to rewrite uh, the other the, the rest of the series um, and I've currently got it planned as four more books with two two arcs so three arcs in total six books in total um, just to sort of tie up all loose ends and and get everything resolved it so like if you read like read all of it the like the three plots and the three three threads and stuff like that get resolved um, but like each individual arc and each individual book can work quite well on its own without you necessarily having to have read everything else in between. Um, so the title for Curse and Mayo is based on what the original third book was going to be titled, or the, the original third book is Saved Under, which is Live in Mayo. Or Live in Mayo, depending on how you want to pronounce it, because it's the same spelling either way. <laughs> I've always thought of it as being live in Mayo. Um, so basically the third book was always going to go back to Mayo, which is where the first book is set, which is a fictional town somewhere in England or potentially Scotland. Because um, that's the other thing I kind of realised um, as I was sort of creeping towards the end of uh, the writing process or the editing process for um, Broken Before Use and Welcome to Marysville is that these two two locations, Mayo from, from the first book and Marysville from the second book, are not close together. They're not even remotely close together. They, um, based on the speed at which um, they are able to travel uh, because of the circumstances at the end of the first book. I'm trying not to squeal anything. Um, because their, their journey time has been slowed down and it is mentioned that they're only traveling for a couple of hours a day. The two places have to be between six and eight-ish hours apart, maybe a little bit more. Um, obviously, I know like some areas of the country, even if it's not as great a distance it can take you longer to get from A to B because of the types of roads that you're having to travel. Um, so I think it's a little bit of that going on in this situation um, where it's like the, the particular types of roads that they're traveling down um, just just take longer for whatever reason probably because it's country roads and I know like if you're like on like um, like the highway or whatever it's called. I'm, I'm not a driver, people. I'm not a driver. <laughs> um, but like if, if you try sort of like traveling down like um, like the, those those types of roads um, that where you can do the speed, then I think the journey probably isn't as long. But certainly I imagine towards the towards the Marysvale end of it, because Marysvale is a large it's a small town slash large village, depending on how you want to look at it. It was orig originally a very rural vi village, very rural village. There we go. There's words. I can take words. Um, so my guess is that's what takes the time with the journey, that um, Marysville is very out of the way. Um, so for it to be sort of like a six to eight our journey and it not necessarily be from the top of the country to the bottom of the country um, in terms of distance. I, I can sort of justify it just about, but there is definitely a distance between the two places. They're not, you know, they're not stones throw from each other. They are a fair distance away from each other um, as, as locations. Um, <laughs> Um, which isn't something I necessarily thought about 10-ish years ago when I was originally writing the books. <laughs> but it's definitely one of those things I've, I've thought about now. Um, of course, they are both very fictional places. Uh, uh, as far as I'm aware, there is, there is like, Mayo as I've got it, 
uh, does not exist. I, I don't know if there is a town, city, or whatever out there that is called Mayo. Certainly with the spelling that I use for it, because it's uh, M-A-I-O. So yeah, it's pronounced Mayo, but it's not spelt like Mayo. <laughs> because um i'm not even sure where it like because it's so so long ago that i that i wrote it i'm not even sure where the name where the name may have sort of come from um it certainly feels very of that era for my writing where i would just take a word change a letter or two and utilize it as the name for something <laughs> very much and to be fair I'm still kind of in that era of writing if I'm doing like my more fantasy stuff and I need to name something away that sounds a bit more fantastical then yeah I I will absolutely 100% drop letters change the spelling a little bit uh, so it's essentially it's a normal word like for pronunciation but it's spelled differently <laughs> such a lazy way of doing it I know it is but I don't know it works it works for me at any rate <laughs> um but uh yeah so no idea what how or why I came up with the name for Mayo but the third book is set back in Mayo um and I'm pretty sure that the fourth book will be if not solely set in Mayo, then the majority of it set in Mayo, um, just because there is still storyline um, for for that place, for that location that needs to be sort of tied up. Um, I knew very much going in what this arc um, was going to sort of tie up and what the final arc was going to sort of look at. Um, so this arc is very much focused on, um, obviously, the, the, there's a title for the first book, which is Cursed. So um, there is a curse that needs to be resolved, um, and it is something that you do learn about in the first arc. Um, it's definitely mentioned in the first arc, and nothing kind of comes of it, because as I said, it's just the first arc, and I, I know that there are going to be other books. Um, the second book, um that I've kind of just about got a name for now. I can't remember what I I can't remember what I thought. I know that I wanted it to be a reflection of Broken Before Youth, like uh Cursed Mayo is a reflection of Welcome to Mary's Vale. So it, I think it's something along the lines of Oh no, I remember it. It's something along the lines of damaged goods. Um I don't think it was that exactly. I know, I, I know it's a slightly. I can't remember what it was. I, it will come to me. It will come to me. Like, I know what my brain's like. There's, there's too much going on in it right now. So, um, <laughs> I just can't remember what it is right now. Um, but I know that one is going to be focused on. Um, so there is this crossover moment um, at the end of. Broken Before Use and the beginning of Welcome to Mary's Vale that hints at something. So anybody that has read those two books knows what this moment is, much more so I think from Broken Before Use um, than necessarily from Welcome to Mary's Vale. Because Welcome to Mary's Vale would just, if you've only read that one, it'd be a very odd, out of place almost kind of moment, but when you couple it with uh, Broken Before You, you, you kind of know what's going on there, uh, or suspect what might be going on there. And then nothing happens with it throughout the entirety of Welcome to Mary's Dale. Um, and that's what's going to, that's what the fourth book is going to look into and investigate. And the section of the third, uh, the third book of the section of Curse Before Mayo that I'm writing at the moment. The end section is setting up for the fourth book, so it's going to have that crossover again, um, where like the ending scene um, or scene in a bit uh, will repeat at the start of the fourth book um, as set up for the fourth book. So yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so that's very much like where I am with with that project at the moment. Um, obviously, I know I'm doing a lot of editing at the moment. Um, my primary project for editing is Blue Giants, which is the fourth Neverrated book, um, because that is definitely going to be the next release. Um, and then I can start working on releasing everything else uh, because everything else is a lot shorter. Um, I am probably also going to start editing um, Kirsten Mayo once I've uh, finished, once I start writing the the, the second part of the arc. Um, just because if I can also get that those books released next year, then that's that's. You know that's not necessarily a bad thing um, at this moment in time it's not necessarily the plan um, but if I'm if I'm sort of in the position where I've released all the other books or I, I want something to sort of stagger in between because I don't necessarily I, I want the variety to be there because I know I can write um, these are the, the other types of stories, these are the themes, these are the uh, mixed uh, genre type things. Um, I basically want to sort of make sure that my other series is and stuff are staying alive because I am, you know, I, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to make sure that everything is accounted for. Um, so it might well be that I do release the planned five books for next year, but instead of it being We Giants and then all four of the books from the first spin-off series, because obviously I've got two more books from a second spin-off series from the Never Aten, um, might well be that it's We Giants, the first two parts of, or the first two books in the um, What Makes Me, which is what it's currently being called, um, series, and then the next two installments in the Shadow of, of Light series. Um, that's probably that's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> and then the following year, um, it, it, yeah, whatever happens in the following year will happen in the following year. So um, that might be the plan. It might be that I up it to seven releases next year with like a, a bit of a slower slower year afterwards then again it doesn't necessarily have to be a slower year afterwards because i have so much backlog um and at some point i also need to uh rework time forgets and zero conformity <laughs> oh there is so much that i could do there is so much that i could do um but yeah, that's, that's very much where everything is at at the moment in terms of the Shadows Meet the Light project. Um, it's not necessarily what I thought I was going to talk about coming into this. Um, but it was very much like once I started talking about it, it was like, oh, you know what? There is so much I can say. Um, I don't talk about this project as much as I talk about the Neverating stuff and the Neverating spin-off stuff. Um, and that's partly because partly because the never rain stuff is where my heart is at most of the time <laughs> just because it, it, there's so much to it there is like i love the characters um i, I love right i like you know I've, I've spent so much time in that world and with those characters um that i sometimes forget that actually no i am writing another project at the same time and i'm actually doing a really good job of not make mixing up which stories which story I'm writing in and stuff like that so it's uh no I am I am fairly passionate about the shadow beneath the light series and the second arc that I am currently writing for it I just sort of forget that sometimes I think <laughs> I sometimes I don't remember that I am equally as passionate about this other series that I am writing um but I might if I can look to release that as well although it, it all depends on how and when I finish writing the second book in the arc um and obviously it's taking me a lot longer because I'm not dedicating as I'm, I'm dedicating yeah I'm not dedicating as much time to it as I am to the other writing project um that's not uh although saying that saying that 
I would say that um, I am closer to the end with um, Kirsten Mayo than I am with the current spin-off of the Neveration. So, um, okay, maybe it's taken me a little bit longer to sort of reach this point, um, because I, I, I did start it before. Um, and I, I some it's one of those where sometimes I'm not writing very much for, for it at all, but then the, the same can be argued for the, the other project because I'm doing that in the evenings and I quite often I'm chatting to people in the evenings. So sometimes I'm like, if, if I'm mine, it's sort of like, I kind of got ideas there, but I'm not like totally sure that I'm more likely to sort of chat to people and then just as I start getting my flow going I have to go to bed um likewise in the mornings um I might sort of wander around for a little bit um I'm trying to sort of like focus where my thoughts are at and then just as I'm getting getting into the flow of it um certainly on the mornings where I have work I set myself a specific time where I stop writing so that I, I have time to breakfast and chill before having to go into work because Trying to go into work when your mind is full of story is not very good for your concentration. <laughs> and I would know I have done that uh, several times. Um, definitely when I was writing The Colours I See and No Doors Allowed, um, I was quite often going into work having like gone part way through a, a paragraph and not being able to stop thinking and like, like almost like frustrated that I can't just like sit down and finish that paragraph. Um, so I try to give myself, I try to like finish whatever little bit that I'm writing so I, I can sort of like draw a line under it. So sometimes I might go a little bit past half past. Um, and then once I'm sort of, yeah, I, I, I sort of like go, okay, I'll, I will write until this time and this time the absolute latest at which point breakfast and chill and then going into work uh, where I'm not going to be itching to get back to my laptop for the entire day um, just so I can finish this sentence <laughs> but it feels like sometimes I never leave a sentence incomplete but it is what it feels like sometimes um, so like likewise in the evenings um, I will always leave it at a point where I feel like um, I'm not going to be dwelling on it too much um although sometimes if I'm like if I haven't written as much it's then it's better for the next day that I come back to write it because it's just given my time my time my mind a little bit extra time to sort of like mull these things over and figure out what it's doing um so I'm never worried if I have a day when I don't write as much as long as I've written at least a couple of lines and sometimes that is all it is in the morning if I might if I get up late although that hasn't happened in a while I miss sleep proper. I miss sleeping properly. I I am just getting up at like ten past five, half past five, like every single morning without fail, even if I don't have an alarm set. In fact, the two days that I've been back to work since I went back to work <laughs> after my two weeks off, um, I got up both days before my alarm went off because I just. I just seem to be waking up at that time of day now so I I yeah yeah that's great that's what I want <laughs> all right okay so enough of that tangent tangent <laughs> uh, I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting um I can't promise if or when I will be talking about the Shadows Beneath the Light series again. Um, it's one of those I know I need to be talking a little bit more about, um, especially because it's it's probably going to take longer before those books come out, um, just because they need to be written. <laughs> That's usually the thing that gets in the way, you need to write them. Um, it's one of those where it's sort of like it's ticking over in the background all the time, um, but it's not necessarily at the forefront of my mind when I come down to sit these, uh, sit, when I come to sit down and film these, um, which is why it usually ends up being the narration stuff, because that is usually at the forefront of my mind just because I love the characters so much. And yeah, it's, it's my baby. <laughs> it really is my baby. Um, 
so I, I hope you've sort of found this one interesting. I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to talk about next time. And I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.